we are going to turn our attention to Tyka. Am I saying your name right? Is it Tyka? It is. It's Tyka. Okay. I'm going to make sure I'm being respectful. <laughs> I, once again, thank you. Thank you for coming on this show. Um, we rarely, if ever, have guests on here other than the guest hosts uh, that sometimes share the mic with me. So this is for us, uh, people who listen to this show, we are like, as you may know, we definitely very much appreciate you know, your brother's talent uh, and the work that comes out of that. So this is, you know, a blessing to us, uh, and we just really appreciate you coming through. I just can't express that enough. Well, thank you so much for having me. All right, so let's let's get started now. I have some questions here. Um, now we're just going to start where we start, and I want to go back kind of somewhat to the early days. Okay. And I was just curious, because I'm a musician myself, so I was really oh. curious, like, when people, uh, what inspires people to uh, get into music? So my first question would be, you know, to you is what music, you know, were you listening to as a child, or, or was there was your music that inspired you to maybe wanted to get into music? Um, things like the Supremes, um, Aretha Franklin, that type of thing. Um, even okay. some of the male artists like Smokey Robinson and wow, so okay. those are real early days. <laughs> no, those are all classic material, so those are definitely a great thing. Now just just curious, is there anything out there current that you kinda like or that you're into? The type of music I listen to now you mean? Oh yeah, any type of music is any, any Um now I listen to more gospel music, so more Dietrich Haddon or Jay Moss. Um, okay. Tiki Shear, that type of thing. Here. All right. Um, what What was like the first instrument that you learned how to play? I learned how to play a clarinet. Really? Yeah. <laughs> was that something like Was that through like school or something like they got you that? Or? That's right. Everybody okay. usually took band, <laughs> and so I picked the clarinet. Okay. Okay. Um, and you brought a band. Did you play in a band when you were uh, younger? Not um, when I was real young. As I got older, I formed a couple of bands, but obviously we never took off and went anywhere. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. I want. And this is a question I actually I asked on the uh, the other show that you were on previously uh, with, with uh, Jacqueline, and I was curious of what kind of influence did your parents uh, play into, you know, you pursuing music? You know, obviously, like, we know that your father was a musician and, and had a band as well. And I'm curious, did he was he playing a lot in the house? Was your mother, uh, I mean, she was a singer as well. And what kind of um, influence did your parents have on, on you uh, getting into music? It influenced me a lot because that's really what I saw my mother's role as. I mean, she would stand there and sing next to my father because he would play at night. So she would um, help him rehearse because he played every night downtown Minneapolis. And so I thought that's what women did, you know, growing up. I'm a little girl, so mm -hmm. I think that's what you're supposed to do, stand and sing next to your husband and cook and clean, that type of thing. Okay, okay. Um and then, is that, I mean, was your dad, like, was, so would he, like, rehearse at home, or did you guys see him actively doing shows and things of that nature as children? Or? No, he would only rehearse at home. It was a nightclub, and kids weren't allowed in nightclubs, okay. you know, back then. And so, no, we were never allowed inside there. <laughs> okay, okay. That makes sense. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, let's see. There's, okay. I heard that I can't find where you can buy this, and maybe it's for a reason for that. But I know that you recently have written a book. Yes, uh, Mama. Oh. Mama never taught me how to sing. That's right. And right now, I'm changing publishers. So it's okay. not available, but it will be available very soon. What What is, what is the book about for people that don't know? It's about growing up in Minneapolis, um, but it's kind of a coming-of-age story. Um, I'm light-skinned, and I'm black, so um, black people with light skin go through different things as children than maybe Caucasian children or dark-skinned black 
people do. And so I just kind of tell it from my viewpoint. Um, I was overweight as a child, I, so I talk about that and the prejudice against not only color but size. Um, and so I kind of just explore a lot of different things and um, talk about how I have come to grips with, you know, some of the things that happen to you as a child and um, why things happen. And now, kind of, okay. I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm going to cut you off. <laughs> and, then, and then kind of at the end, it, it has a happy ending. I, I've i found peace and joy. And so I've been writing the book for about 20 years, but I never got to the point where I could write that last chapter, and I didn't want it to have a bad ending. Mm-hmm. I it had to, you know, kind of have a happy ending, happily ever after. And when I finally achieved that in my life, I said, now I can write that final chapter. So it's been a joy to write it. Okay, I wanna, and I want to talk about, uh, if we can, what brought that uh, happy ending to it. And I think I have an idea, but I'm going to save that just for a minute. Going back in, um, I was listening to another, another program I heard you talking about the book, and you were talking about that you uh, said you, had, you were regretting your mother, you have some regret uh, or some, you know, uh, feelings towards your mother for things maybe that you felt like you didn't get from her or, or what have you. And I was always curious, and I'm a father as well, so this is stuff that I, you know, really uh, can understand. But I'm curious, what, what can you speak on, you know, why did you have regret for your mother for, for those years or, th- or that time, and what helped you release that? Um, yeah, we because we were able to finally talk about it and clear everything up and become best friends. But growing up, I wanted, you know, I watched television a lot, so I wanted, like, Father's Knows Best type mother. And I didn't get June Cleaver. I got a single parent who had just got divorced, who had to get three jobs and didn't have time to comb my hair or, you know, dress me in dresses and straighten my socks up and, make sure I was a real girl. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I I think I just went through a, a long period of kind of resenting that she wasn't the mother in the on T V. And okay. then as I grew up I realized that she did the best she could with what she had, being a again a light skinned black woman in Minneapolis and you know, back in those days it was hard, you know, for a woman to do something other for a black woman to do something other than clean a house and that type of thing. And she went on to get her master's degree. And oh, so, wow. go ahead. I'm sorry, Michael. <laughs> no, I was just saying, I was saying, wow, that's an accomplishment. You get the master's yeah, degree. Yeah, it, it is. Um, I mean, coming from, I mean, she came from the project. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, for her to achieve that, it was, you know, a feat in itself. And, so she's she was a very strong woman, and as again as I grew up and had children of my own, then we both started to see each other for the women that we were growing into be. And again, she ended up being my best friend. So, okay. Did you have any? And I, uh, I'm not going off the grid, as they say slightly, but you brought something up. I mean, because I know, like for me. Um, I regretted my father for a long time for various things, right? But uh-huh. I never got that chance to release that uh, and, and, and to deal with it. And I started to see myself, you know, kind of going in the same direction that he was going and mm-hmm. just like having to slow myself down and be like, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm only mm-hmm. going, you know what I mean? And so yeah. I, I guess what I'm saying is, did, did you see it? Before you got to the point where you were able to release that and to get that great relationship with your mother, did you did you see some of the um, and this is something that you know, I, I talk about on other shows like generational curses? Did, did you did, did, was any of that type of thing playing out as well? You were kind of maybe you start to see that we take on some of the uh, the spirit or nature of our parents. You know what I mean? I don't know if I'm... Uh, I, I do know what you mean. In regards to raising children, I knew how I was raised, and I knew I didn't want that for my kids. And so I, on purpose, 
did something different for my children. Um, some of maybe the generational curses that I took on, though, was that alcohol drinking was okay. And um, in our family, alcohol, um, or for black people, period, is, right. you know, and it goes back to slavery where, you know, when you finally get to come in from the field, you want to sit down and relax and if you can have a drink. And that's kind of the way we were brought up, you know, with my grandparents and things like that. Um, and so they drank, and then I would, I started to drink, and I thought it was okay, but obviously it turned out that for me it was, I wasn't the kind of person that could just take one drink and then leave the rest alone. I had to keep okay. drinking. And so that okay. for me was, I guess, a generational curse where I thought drinking was okay. That's how you have fun. That's how you relax. If you're upset, have a drink. You know, if you're happy, have a drink. <laughs> so Yeah. Um, now I, I, I wanted to save the, the Prince thing for later, but maybe this may play in this and maybe this doesn't. Was there a certain point in your journey and, and you know, your family's journey as well, where uh, not getting the specifics of his success, but his success did, did that come in? at some point and change your family? Like you just, your entire family where here is obviously our son, our brother, uh, our cousin and uncle may have you. And he is this shining light. Did that bring any type of um, healing in some capacity uh, to, to the situation? And maybe, I don't know if that was a launching pad to things. Maybe that's maybe not the case, but did it even provide any, I mean, that's a huge thing. I would imagine if a person in your family becomes this kind of, superstar person, uh, I would imagine it would affect the family in some, some form or, or fashion. I'm just curious. Um, I don't know if it's really affected anybody. Um, I think what happened is, the, and, and maybe this is the reason why, is because Prince has played music since he was so young, and he's always done that. And so um, it was a slow road for him to get there. Maybe other people think, oh, he just exploded on the scene, but He's been playing, you know, since he was seven. So, um, and, you know, it was always a point where, you know, the band was going to take off and we were all excited and then it didn't happen. And then they were going to get another record deal and then it didn't happen. I mean, it was all those false starts that, you know, it, it, it just kind of slowly kind of built. And right now today, I guess I'm, I'm more experiencing the effect that he's had on people I just found out last year they celebrate his birthday. And so that wow. floored me. There are people <laughs> in the world that celebrate his birthday and Michael Jackson's birthday. And I was like, you're kidding. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, that is a trip. <laughs> okay. Um, so let's, let's get into the, the healing, the, the happy ending. What was it that turned it around for you? What, 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 one of the what, big, one of the big things was that um, my brother sent me to a place called Hazelden. And speaking of Hazelden, I will be speaking there on September first, um, and this will be my first time back there since I left. Um, when he sent me there, what I found there different than what I had found in other treatment centers, because that was the fourth time I had been to treatment, um, is God, and so. Um, that was the turning point for that happy ending. And when you say you found God, was there somebody, was there a man of God there that kind of introduced it to you, or did you just pick up the Bible, or I'm just curious. It, it was the steps. The steps before, when I was in the other treatment centers, they give you the steps, and then they say um, a higher power. In Hazelden, they teach that higher power is God. Although you can go the other way, but um, they tend to lean a little more that, um, and that's what Hazelden was kind of founded on, that it was, that God was that higher power. And I did a lot of research and um, things while I was there. And so that's what kind of started that turn for me, is putting wow. gut in there instead of just a higher power, a head of lettuce or, you know. Right. Yeah, we, 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 uh, okay, okay. 
Um, and what year was what Do you remember, like, what year or what time this was? This was approximately six years ago. Okay, and just, just so we can be clear, because I really like people, when we hear people talk about things and, you know, people, you know I want to, let's really explain, can, or if you are comfortable with that, what what is, I'm sorry, the name of the place, Hazleton? Say it again, I'm sorry. What was the name of the, the, the place you went to again, Hazel? Oh, it's Hazelman. <laughs> okay. Well, then, and just can we, I mean, can you just tell people what that, you, you obviously said with treatment, but what can you, are you comfortable saying what treatment was before what, or? I was addicted to crack cocaine and alcohol. Okay. Okay. And so, wow, you, you were able to release that. You found God. That that's uh that's I mean obviously that's a testimony right there, you just did that and that's just like wow. And now you have created this new album and I've been listening to some of these songs and uh I must say, you definitely come in with the word in your music. <laughs> and I and I really you know, I, and I appreciate that because that's you know, like I said, I do my little music thing as well and I try to do the same thing. And uh-huh. can you can you speak on, you know, um I was listening to Rock and Roller. Uh-huh. And um, what, what, what prompts you? Here's the thing, because yeah, I'm going to bring your brother up again as an example. But a lot of people would say, and I get this a lot, when I say I listen to Prince's music and things, people always think of, oh, well, you listening to, you know, some type of racy, sexual type of lyric or something like that. And I'm like, well, no. Did you really listen to the, the you know, go listen to the music, listen to the lyrics you would be surprised what he's really talking about, right? And and so here you are, you're his sister, and you are definitely, um, I call it like a new a new form of gospel music. It's not the traditional gospel, but it's like right. funky, but the, the word is there, you know what I'm saying? And I think that's the key. It's like we can create these rhythms and we can create these chants, uh, catchy lyrics, but okay, what are they actually saying? and you're actually saying something, and you're actually speaking about God, Jesus. Can you speak on, you know, how and why you're using your music to do that? Is there, obviously, there's a reason, but I would like to hear from you. Uh, what, what is your mission to do with your songs and your music? Um, I, I like to tell stories. I'm a writer at heart, I guess. And so music is just another outlet. It's a different type of ministry. Um, I'm I'm kind of shy, so stopping somebody on the street and asking them, "Have you heard the good news?" and they go, "What?" You know, I'm like, uh, <laughs> right. "Jesus loves you." I'm just not the type of person. So this is kind of my way of saying that same thing, just a different way. Here, um, uh, you know, stop somebody on the street and say, um, "I don't know, but would you like to listen to my music?" And then when they hear it. You know, prayerfully, they'll hear that Jesus loves them. Amen, amen. Um, now, did, did you guys go to church as children? Like, were you? Yeah. Is that something? Okay. We did. My mother, um, my mother's mother was a Seven Day Adventist, and then my father's side was Baptist. So we got a mix okay. of both. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm going well. So, were you guys? Well, I don't know if you guys are in the choir band or anything of that nature. But obviously, I can hear it in the music, and sometimes you see it in some of the things that Prince, Prince does. But it seems like he's definitely has some experience being around, uh, you know, a traditional gospel choir band, you know, southern mm-hmm. style church. Is, is that a correct assumption on my part? Um, not so much southern, because again, we're Minneapolis. Oh, sure, sure. And so, you know, there wasn't my mom. And her sister, they're twins, and they were the first twin, black twins, born on the north side of Minneapolis. So that kind of tells you, and that wasn't that long ago, so that kind of tells you how many black people around here. We didn't have a black radio station. I told Mm -hmm. you I listened to um, Smokey Robinson and the Supremes, but that was because my older brother, he would go to Kansas City and bring 45s back. And so that's how we got to hear the black music. We didn't have a black radio station. Okay. That, that, I've been, I should have been to Minneapolis once uh, back in the 90s. 
And uh, I'm coming from Seattle, Washington, which is probably kind of like how you know, your area was, where there's a very low population of black people. Okay. In a predominant, uh, you know, uh, white area. And um, particularly in music, early on, same type of way, there was really no black station. So for us, say like a Prince music, I would only hear the bigger hits, you know, like yeah. the controversy. Well, I wouldn't even hear that. I, would, I heard 1999. But when uh-huh. I was a child, I went to uh, Houston, Texas, like the Fifth Ward area of Houston, Texas, and getting off the plane there and hearing this music. And that was the first, the first French music I ever heard was actually The Time. Okay. <laughs> my, my, uh, my, my cousin, uh, her, name, her name was Jackie as well, and they, all they were talking about was the time and Prince and where I come from, we've never heard of this. I'm like, what are you talking about? And they were just playing the songs on the radio and the songs were long. But I was, and I heard Get It Up and I was like, my God, this is, this is a joint. Like, what is this, you know? Mm-hmm. Coming back to Seattle and, of course, nobody knew who they were or anything. But when I was there in Houston, you know, your brother and, and Morris and all those guys, they were like, I guess for kids of today, I always say they were like how 50 Cent and, you know, a Jay-Z, how they're just, their influence and imprint on a neighborhood was just ridiculous. Like every car was blasting it, you know. Every, everybody knew all the words, and they were like underground kings or something. It was just always so amazing to me to, to finally hear them, like, years later, you know, obviously blow up and all that stuff. But I don't know if you guys even knew that. Well, maybe you did, but. They really, they really ran those neighborhoods, really those black <laughs> neighborhoods, which is so funny because you said you didn't have a little black neighborhood in your area, but they ran the black neighborhood. <laughs> so, yeah, later on we did get, you know, finally one black radio station, KMOJ, and mm-hmm. they would definitely play them because, you know, it's hometown talent. But we, anytime we heard it, it was like, turn it up, or that's Prince's <laughs> sister over there, turn it up, you know. <laughs> And then we wow. had the tapes too, you know. We got we got the right. advanced copy, so we had heard all the music. So I I knew all the words and the music before they hit the radio. Wow! Don't even get me started. <laughs> 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 well, I, I tell you what, Tyga, let's let's take a quick break. I'm gonna play one of your songs here. We're gonna come back. We're gonna get in some more. We're gonna take a breather, but we'll be right back and listen to the Prince podcast. Um, Tyco, can we get into some Prince questions? Is that okay? Sure, sure go ahead. Oh. You can ask and anything you want. Now, that doesn't mean I'll answer it, but you can ask oh, okay. anything I you want. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, I, don't, I don't go crazy with it, you know. I always try to keep it. I would, I would say the same thing I would say if we was face-to-face. So I'm, I'm, not, okay. I'm not like those. I'm not like Geraldo and all those cats that try to go crazy and all that good stuff. So, let's see. And you know what? Let me just say this. I, I, um, if you guys hear this loud noises, there's like a jet air show practice thing going over here. So you may hear these jets come dangerously close to the street. I'm not in Afghanistan. It's just that that's what's going on in Seattle today. So, that's <laughs> um, so let's see. I, I'm just going to start wherever I start. Paisley Park. I'm always okay. curious. Um, what was it like? Well, if you remember back when that first was constructed and it was being built, what, was that seen as like a, I, I know it was to me, but was it seen like an accomplishment? Like, wow, here's Prince coming, well, I don't say he ever left, but he's bringing this entertainment thing to our hometown where he's creating this studio and this complex what was, like, the uh, general consensus of your family and your friends? Uh, I think was, uh, um, later on, obviously, it was like, man, this is great. This is kind of where you live because, you know, he, his office was kind of where he hung out. But um, when he first built it, um, he brought us out there, and he was so excited, and nothing was in the place. It was, it was just all white walls. And so he's running around talking about, this is where I'm going to put this, and this is where I'm going to put that. And so all I see is a bunch of white. And I'm like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> and 
the thing is huge, you know, so it's like a hundred of me looking straight up. And I, I couldn't envision any of what he had, you know, in his mind. But I just know it was big and it was white. And I was just looking at him like, uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> but now it's gorgeous. He's thrown a lot of different color in it. He just remodeled it. And so um, I love the color now. It accents the white beautifully. But at first, you know, it was just a bunch of white walls. <laughs> now, a lot of these questions that I'm asking, I'm trying to really clear up, clear up a lot of uh, questions and misconceptions with fans and things of that nature. So I'm going to ask you this about Paisley Park uh, because I because I don't know. But is Paisley Park still open to some capacity? It, some people think that it's been shut down or something, so I just want to clear that up. If right you know now it is. it is because, again, they remodel, they're they remodeling, and they should be okay. almost completed if not already, but um, right now it's not open. Okay, okay. To my knowledge. I hope, I, there you go. And I, I've always, I've never been there, but uh, I always wanted to check it out. I remember they used to have those uh, celebrations things. Uh-huh. Are familiar with that? And, right. man, I, was, I, I wanted to go to that so bad, but... <laughs> oh, bro- oh, broken, lonely. Sounds <laughs> like a lot of fun. Um, yeah, we've had. I've had a lot of fun there. Imagine, imagine. You've probably seen a lot of different concerts uh, and all kind of stuff. I imagine. Yeah, it's not so many much as the concerts, but meeting some famous people that have come through, and okay. it just um. It kind of, a little bit kind of feels like home to me, too, in some instances, because, again, now it's cozy. Different rooms are kind of sectioned off and at, before he had it. And so, you know, there's tables and chairs and a kitchen, and so it's, you know, like his own little house, just a great big house. Wow. Now, have you recorded there, actually? No, I've never recorded there. He's offered to let me come in and I declined but mm-hmm. okay I'll let that go um, then speaking on recording have you ever watched him record uh, record a song before or work on a song in the studio yeah um, the first album that he did I was out in California while he was recording that and so I was able to go in and kind of see him work I got bored and went out <laughs> into the um, the outside area and just kind of sat on the couches and tried to find stuff to do. Because, I mean, when wow. you're working, you're working. There's nothing for me to do. I wasn't singing background, so I was just hanging. Does he, like, um, you, know, I'm, I, you know, I've read things of his recording process or, or some things, but you know, is he going and start from the top and just finish it before he leaves or does he do you know if he likes to go back and mess with the things mess with song, songs later and add different things or I'm not sure exactly what his process is it may be different for different songs um, mm-hmm. at that time a lot of the tracks were already laid and Patrice Russian was coming in to help them with something back then called a synthesizer before anyone uh-huh. knew what it was and so she was called in to help and so it was fun just seeing her. I mean, everybody gets thrilled over Prince, but for me, Patrice Russian, you know, she was like, oh, my goodness, you're, she's actually in here while. And so um, <laughs> in regard to how I, I guess, go at music, on the music that art is on the CD now, a brand new me, um, I got the music first and listened for God to tell me what type of lyrics to add to them. But... Other times, I'll write a song, sometimes the melody first, sometimes the lyrics first. So everybody probably approaches it differently. Okay, and you're glad you brought up your album. How was the recording process for you? Was it, wow. I don't know there if you can hear that. that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I did. <laughs> That's crazy. Now, just imagine if you were in the Middle East, it wouldn't be fun. Don't know. You thought there was going to be a bomb any moment. Exactly. They'd be dropping bombs on me. But, um, oh, so the process of your album, um, how long was that recording process for you? 
I recorded it over about a year period because I was just kind of going in. It was my son's studio, and I was kind of fooling around. And then my younger son said, you should get a MySpace page. And so I did, and I put the music on there. And then people started asking me, where can they buy it? And I said, wow, people want to buy this? Well, maybe I'll start to sell it. So I started selling singles, and then I said, well, everybody keeps asking me. Maybe I'll put a CD together. And I said, well, I'll do it as a demo, so maybe I can go on and maybe try to get a record deal again because I um, had a record deal back in 1986, 88. A CD came out, or an album back then, sorry, called Royal Blue. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. And then I, I went on and did another one. Well, you signed, for a record, you signed a record deal, a record contract with that album, right? Right, it was a six-figure contract with Chrysalis. Okay, okay. Now you brought up, you know, you, you brought up about you want to get trying to get a record deal and that thing. Let, let me, as a fan person, a purchaser, let, let me say this, and I, I want to say this to any of the musicians that I love, particularly a lot of people that came out of you know the whole Minneapolis thing. Listen. <laughs> You guys don't need a record company. Just have that music ready, and I'll buy it. And a lot of us are ready, <laughs> you buy it. I'll buy it us us are ready to buy. You know, like we've been waiting years for you guys to start putting this stuff out, and we rather would make sure that you get the money directly. You know, right? So I'm like, so when I saw what you're doing here, I know you're using CD Baby. That's a great company. Um, your stuff is on iTunes. I just, I'm just like good. Because I just want to see that it's up, and then I can just hit PayPal or whatever it is, shoot that the money, and then I see the music comes right down, and I know that it's going to you, the artist, and I know right. that the music's coming straight from you. That's that's what we want. So, if you, I mean, and you know what the thing about it is too is that the album concept is great, but if you had a thing where you were just like, look, here's a song, a couple songs I did this month. So here's a couple songs. We buy that too. So this okay, this one, we're good. I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'll keep I just that want in y'all mind. to know. I just want y'all to know we are here to support the things that we love, and we would rather get the things that we love consistent, constantly. You know what I mean? Like not once a year, but if, if Tyco was like, oh here, here, here you go. Here's this. I'd be like. Good, great, this is good. Let me get that one. And then you turn with another one. Yeah, you know, so just, just throwing that out there. You take it how you want to take it. <laughs> um, let's see. What, um, I was going to ask you this. What, what is your favorite song or songs from your new album? From the new album, it's Joy. That was one of the first ones that I recorded, and so that's still one of my favorites. Okay, okay. And, um... I wanted to, before I go back to the Prince, you're getting ready to go on tour, and you said you're shy. <laughs> so how does the shy type of turn into the stage, tearing down the stage type of on tour? Um, I think it has a whole lot to do with being prepared and practicing because I've done it so many times at home then, it, you know, I can't wait to get on the stage to do it. But, I mean, as far as, you know, when you're talking to somebody or asking somebody a question, sometimes, or if they're staring at you know, if people are staring at you in your face, that kind of makes you kind of shy. It's like, what are you looking at? <laughs> <laughs> so it's kind of, it's a little hard to do interviews and things like that. Well, we uh, exactly. hear those planes again. Yeah, they they really uh doing some doing a number out here in these streets. I don't really understand, but um, well, let's let's, let's let's let everybody know this tour information. Uh, August fourteenth, fifteenth, and sixteenth, you're going to be in Gary, Indiana. That's right, Michael Jackson's hometown. Michael Jackson's hometown. Uh, so you're looking forward to those dates? Yeah, I can't wait. It'll be fun. Uh, where do you, where where are you going to be playing at? down there. I don't have that in front of me. On the 14th, I'll be at the Glen Theater. Then the 15th, I'll be at the Palace. 
on 5th, and then on the 16th, they're having a gospel-type buffet at Dusty's Buffet. And so there's going to be food there, and then after everybody eats, then we're all just going to kind of have a little concert. And so that sounds like it's going to be a lot of fun. Nice, nice. Yeah, let me know if you ever need a... uh you know, cowboy or somebody to carry your bags or something. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll keep them in mind. I've also got a wonderful <laughs> friend. Her name is Jackie, and she set me up with some other dates. Um, in Philadelphia, New Jersey, New York, in October. Um, we're also going to go over to Italy. Um, yeah, I've I, never I been there. This, I heard about this Italy trip, and then let me say uh, hello to Jackie, phenomenal <laughs> person. Uh, but once again, so y'all going all over the world, you know, doing big things. Look, tell them people that I'm Prince's cousin. Tell them I'm like the, the distant cousin. Keep okay, coming along Michael the Dean. ride. There you go. <laughs> Michael Dean wants to come to and sing back up. <laughs> there you go. So all the people in Tuscany and Florence and Pisa, and we're on the, at the Leaning Tower of Pisa, will holler out your name. We want Michael Dean. All right. Now, I, I'll come out there with, see, I'll go ahead and get your brother's uh, those get-off pants. <laughs> <laughs> Let me stop. Anyway. Okay. So, yeah, definitely check out Taika on tour. She is going to be in the States, international. Uh, you definitely want to want to check that out. And we'll, I'll also post the tour dates on the show notes as well. Okay. So we want to make sure that everybody be great. gets that. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Sure, just keep doing your thing. Um, so let's get into a couple more questions here. I don't want to keep you too long unless you want to stay. And that's another thing. I know you're busy. Um, has your brother done any song or, uh, I'll say song, or anything that, is, that has shocked you? Where you were kind of like, ah, uh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> Not so much. Not so much shocked, but I got a lot of flack from um, Sister, that song, because uh, everybody in the neighborhood kept saying, you slept with your brother? Is that song true? Uh, and are you the sister that he's talking about? And so that one was a hard song to try to deal with over the years. Yeah, that's, uh, I didn't even want to bring that up, because I, you know. That's 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 a wild song. I mean, it's a classic one of the Prince, you know, thing. But that is, I can imagine you being his sister. And uh, did you ever ask him about that song? It's like, what, what, what are you doing? And, and, I did. It's about my older sister, and um, because she's so pretty, and she is so, you know, she was the type of person back then. Because my father had another family before me and him, and they're older, and so. Um, she she was kind of worldly and just kind of classy. And so he admired her. And the song is, in a sense, kind of a, a twist on, you know, you're, you're my sister, so we know, obviously, and plus you're so much older, there's no way. But because, you know, you're such a beautiful woman, you know, it was kind of a tribute to her. And for all the help that she gave him, she pulled him out to New York and, was trying to get him a record deal and stuff like that back in the day. So I'm curious. It, it, you it, it really is a song about how much he admires my sister, but, um, you know, people kind of twisted it around the other way and because of the connotation here or there, because, you know, <laughs> it, it was fun to get people talking, and they did. It's just it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did your other sister take that song? I'm curious. My sister? Yeah, did she know that the song was a tribute to her? Yeah, she knew it was. Oh, and we I all knew, knew it was. Everybody in the family knew what it was about. But, okay. you know, trying to explain that to a person on the street that doesn't know who Prince is and my family, and so it was a mess. But I know my grandmother would have whipped my behind if I had kept on. <laughs> 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 okay, how old I was. I would have caught the I didn't knew the belt was coming out when they hit took that with me. That, yeah, that, that's a wild song. Um, okay, so sister, that was the one that shocked you. Yeah, that that yeah. shocked me. All right, not, um, not shocked, but it was it was something to explain. <laughs> okay, okay. Have you ever? Well, because uh, there's another song that 
It's called Papa. Uh, it just came to my mind. Have you heard that song, Papa? I don't remember uh, that one. It was on the... Now, my, my fans, listeners, listeners are probably like, Michael, how do you not know an album? It was on the Come album, I believe. And he was, he was talking... I, I don't know if it was autobiographical or not, but he was talking about being whipped by Papa. Uh, and I might have heard it. Maybe it's just been so long. It's like a, ooh, Papa... Smack, smack. Papa, Papa. Anyway, I might, yeah. I, 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 yeah. If, if you're not too familiar with it, I won't ask the question, but I was curious if that song was any type of, you know, trueness to it or, or anything. Um, well, back in the day, all children got spanking, so. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, I don't in know. my household, they still getting spanking. I don't care what they say. That's, we need, that, 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 that ain't going to never stop with us. <laughs> yeah, and there was a used to be a, a man in the neighborhood too. He would, you know, holler for his child, and the the little right. boy was kind of bad. And he would holler his name out. I'm not gonna say his name, but he would holler his name out. Not that he's famous or anything, but um, and he would be walking up and down the street with a switch in his hand, and he'd be calling for his little boy. And it's like, have you seen him? And it's like, no, last time I seen him, he went that way. We knew he was going to get a spanking, so. <laughs> a switch. Man, I ain't heard that in a minute. Yeah, those green yeah. ones, and they took the off of them. Mm-hmm. That was like back then. Like, even before you got home, you was going to get a whooping by everybody, every adult you came across. Yeah. They're going to tell you behind up. Um, da 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 you know, are there any songs that are you know, favorites of yours by Prince? Um, there was a favorite one that I used to always make him play, and I don't remember the name of it. He never released it, but he would play it on the guitar. It was acoustic, and he'd just kind of tap his foot and sing the song, and I just loved it. And I used to always say, sing that song. Did you tap your foot, too? <laughs> he, he knew which one, and he'd sing it for me. Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Um Let's see. We're gonna wrap up here. One thing: this is a, this is a, a big misconception. A lot of people think that we don't because they don't know, but they think that Prince, your brother, is not like uh, like he may not associate with his family, or that they don't really know him, or some kind of wildness of that nature. Um, and just, I just want to like. And a lot of times, and I used to find myself doing this as well, we forget that he's a human being. Yeah. We forget that he is a man, he is a, he is a son, uh, he's been a husband, he's a real person. And it's yeah. easy to get caught up into just hearing the music and seeing him dancing and all that good stuff. But obviously that is your brother. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you see him totally different than the way that we do. But I just want to hear from you, I mean, do you, are you surprised, and we, you mentioned it earlier, are you surprised of uh, the influence and the impact that he has on people? Or do you, in, do you even really see that? Do, does he see that, as far as you know? There's a lot there in that question. but I think he sees it a lot more than I do. Um, for me, he's always been my brother. I'm younger, so, you know, ever since I've been on this planet, he's been my brother and my older brother, and he's... He really hasn't, to me, really changed over the years. Um, I'm very proud of him. He's grown into a wonderful man. Um, and so the only thing, you know, weird kind of that happened for me is that one girl just stood in the middle of a, a hallway one day and said, somebody said, that's Prince's sister. And she said, yeah, Prince's sister. She screamed at the top of her lungs and ran towards me. And that scared Uh-oh. me. And so that's about the only thing. Um, it it wow. does amaze me that people think of him as, you know, something else because he's always just been my brother. So uh, he's, he's, he's my brother. He's a man. I don't know what to tell right, people. Right. I, I, I can't. It, uh, another thing that I do sometimes when people do kind of act a little giddy is I go, okay, if this was Stevie Wonder's sister, how would I act? And so I got myself in somebody else's shoes, and then so that's how I get through it. Okay, okay, yeah, that's that'd be wild. If somebody just said, "You're pretty sister." 
<laughs> I'll be like, whoa, security. Uh, <laughs> now, this has always been your brother, and I, I joke about this a lot on the show because, you, you know, we live in the Internet age, and there's all of these kind of uh, pictures that come up. Let me stop for a second. There's, there's a tax dollar that was and I they say, flying by my house. You, is that you, your airplanes you, again? Yeah. yeah that's, okay. I think it's going to be all pretty soon. Um, and I apologize for that. I didn't know they were doing this today. It's okay. Um, <laughs> but so you see all these pictures of, of people that come out in these compromising positions and different things of that nature. But the one picture that I want to see is the Prince in Rollers picture. Cause Prince I'm in Rollers. You're getting his hair done all the time. I mean, you know, brothers to the nines, you know, top flight, doing his thing. I, I just think that would be a, a classic picture. Have you ever seen him getting his I mean, this is a dumb question, but have you ever seen him getting his hair done? Like, I've seen him stuff? get his hair done. I don't recall him in rollers, but I do got a, I do have a picture of Morris in rollers. Oh, and no, I'm Lord. not going to put it nowhere, Morris. <laughs> most, most, I'm not putting it nowhere. <laughs> Mark used to always walk around with his because he, you know, had nice hair too. Oh man, that that's. I think I got a couple of pictures with Morris with Curly's in his hair. <laughs> that would be a hilarious album cover, though. Like that would just fit more. You know, I could, you know, more stay high. You could call it high roller. Yeah, you know, exactly. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's hilarious. Um, you bring up Morris. Um, there's been a couple of guys, um, and then I can only speak from my outsider's point of view, that seem to be uh, good friends with your brother. Uh, I want to mention uh, Andre Simone, uh, uh, Morris Day. Were these guys, did you actually, I mean, obviously it's not like you knew, you knew them, but did you, were they around uh, at times with your brother, like more than just being music guys, but did it seem like they were actually real and still maybe are real friends of some nature. You know, when you spend that much time together, you kind of um, end up kind of being brothers or cousins. I guess that would be a better way to put it. Mm -hmm. Um, The band members were like an extended family, and so all of those guys were like my older brothers or my older cousins, and they looked out for me, and, you know, we were a big family, and Minneapolis, again, was very small. A lot of bands, black bands around flight time, a lot of the guys around. And so that was kind of like, you know, being in a club to be a band member and being related to somebody that other people knew, you know. People used to call me Little Prince and things like that. Um, So, I mean, it was just kind of one big family. There wasn't that many black people again, so that was a way for us to belong to something. Okay. Um, Purple Rain. Huge, huge movie album. Again, kind of like the same kind of question I asked with Paisley Park. When Purple Rain come out, came out, does that kind of really seem as like, wow, Prince has really come a long way. This is great. Like, he's, you know, he, he, you know shooting most of the movie here in, in Minnesota, uh, hometown you know, homies in the movie. I mean, was that, I mean, I'm living all the way across the country, and I was, you know, pretty young, but it was a big deal in my neighborhood, so I'm not imagining what, what was it like you were there, and that was your brother, and you, he's on the movie. I mean, was that a big deal? It was a huge deal because that's what we dreamed about doing, you know, is being in movies. And so when he was up there on the screen, I just cried. I cried through the whole movie. He flew the family out to California, and I just cried. through. I couldn't stop crying because I was just that happy. Um, I had to go and watch the movie a couple of times later because then there was another premiere here in Minneapolis. Same thing, just all this, you know, I'm just so proud you don't get into the movie so much because you've got all this emotion. But, yeah, he arrived at that point and was like, man, I can't believe it, but you finally did it. Man, you did it. Right, oh, right. It was just a wonderful moment. Wow, yeah, that that I gotta imagine that's uh, that gotta be pretty emotional just to see a family member do that thing that they 
been working so hard to do. And I'm sure exactly. you mentioned, and that's you what mentioned it was. the ups and downs. Go ahead. He, he had worked so hard for so many years, and he finally did it. And Morris and everybody, I mean, come on. It was like just a big dream come true. Yeah. Yeah. Michael, that, that, maybe one more question and then. Okay. So wrap it up. You just tell me, Michael, wrap it up. <laughs> 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 All right. The last one I would do is, uh, let's see. And you can answer this if you don't have to answer. Uh, do you worry, ever worry about your brother? Uh, and, and I, you know, we hear the rumors. And you don't have to go in, well, I'm not going to go into it, but, but we hear rumors about, you know, health. And then, you know, you look at, you know, Michael Jackson, uh, untimely. Not to say that your brother is anything of that nature, but, do you, you know, is your brother cool? Is he, is he okay? <laughs> no. Yeah. And okay. so, and I'm laughing because, you know, people do come to me with a lot of crazy stuff. And right. so, um, uh, one thing is that, you know, once you're, under, I guess you could call it the protection of God, you're there. So, no, I don't worry about him that way. Um, there was one time when somebody had called and said, it's in the newspaper, and this was a person who I thought really knew what they were talking about. So, of course, I called to make sure it, if it was true or not. Something inside said it wasn't, but I said, I'm going to, it was eating at me. Why would that person call, though? Why would that person call? So I mm. called, and He's just fine, and and that was pretty recent. So yes, he's just fine, and okay. so no, I yeah, I that's... don't worry about him. But when you know you hear something, kind of just out of the blue, it's like wait a minute. And then it's like I said, I was washing dishes and it kept eating at me. But let me call just, and then it'll be off my mind, and I'll be done with it. I got you. I I, I understand that, and you're right. You are and he eats. Something. He eats well, and he he exercises. He looks great, and so he's just fine. Okay, good. good. So praise God. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. That's that's all that needs to be said on that. That's good. Tyka, once again, thank you for coming on here and being open to my questions. I know sometimes they get silly, but just want to be keep them out there. I really appreciate you coming on. And we are all going to go buy your album. I'm telling you, that's what we're going to do. So. Yep, on CD Baby. It's out. It's called A Brand New Me. Hopefully I'll be in your city soon. And if so, please come and see me. I love meeting people and signing autographs and talking to people.